Welcome, welcome to this, our seventh event in this 12 Days of Conversation video series. I'm your host, I'm Gail Scott, and I am super, super excited to introduce you to my very good friend and fellow um, healer and energy expert, Karen Haywood. And we will, we will get into that in a second. Um, I just want to remind everybody who's watching that there are offers that come through these videos, and uh, there are a few of them that have not yet been claimed from the YouTube. So if you're listening to this on YouTube and one of these offers entices you, uh, please do text me at the number that I give later on in this video, and then I can let you know if any of the ones that you're interested in are still available. So what are we going to do today? Again, we're going to introduce a wonderful guest. We're going to have an amazing conversation. And then a little bit later, I'm going to tell you about the sacred economics part of this video series. And we'll see what Karen's got up her sleeve for all of you lovely listeners and watchers. <laughs> so now, without further ado, let me introduce you to my great friend, Karen Haywood. Welcome to the show, Karen. Thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited. So now I've known Karen for about three years now since I started channeling officially with Alastair. And Karen and I met through another guest who's actually coming on on Monday, Peter Dennis, who is a hypnotist. Now, Karen, I know very well, has been in the spiritual world for a really, really, really long time. <laughs> um, and I would say almost probably since her feet hit the planet. But Karen, tell the audience here a little bit what, about what it's like to kind of be conscious and to know that you're conscious and tell them what it's been like for you as this world has evolved over the, you know, the last decade or so. Tell us a little bit about that journey that you've been on. Wow. Okay. That's, that covers a lot of territory. So basically I uh, was awake at 15. And uh, it was back in, uh, I mean, we're going back like 40-ish years ago. That was hard. There were not many people around. I felt very much like a stranger in a strange land. I always felt like an alien. And my nature anyway is to be very, very quiet, very private um, and engaged in the, in the inner worlds. So uh, interfacing with people was really, really challenging on top of that being an empath. It was, and of course, not knowing that because back pre-internet, you didn't know about these things, you know, this has all emerged ever since then. So, um, it's been, it's been very hard, very challenging. And I just gobbled up any information, thousands, I'd say literally thousands of books, thousands of courses and interviews uh, since the advent of the internet. And it's been really interesting to watch the evolution of consciousness over time. And, um, oh gosh, I guess it's been since the 2000s, and especially since 2012, that the, um, the momentum is really accelerated and all these lovely young ones, as I call them, are, um, are beginning to emerge into this whole new world and uh, that that's new to them and ex beginning are beginning to explore what it is to be to be a human on the planet now whether that's from the awakening because of the the um, the tyrancy that's going on on the planet right now or the their awakening was triggered by health concerns or on the other hand it may have very well been um uh, an altered state or it, it, people come to it from many, many different places. And it's, it's just, it's so exciting. I finally found my tribe as in Gail and all of you. And it's, it's just so exciting to be able to, to finally talk my talk openly rather than being worried I'd get thrown in the insane asylum for the things I was seeing internally and externally and uh, believing, you know, back uh, in the 70s when I first woke up, it was just, how do, how do you, how do you work this? It was, it was really tricky. The good part of all this is that because of the challenges that I've had, I'm able to bring those to the table, so to speak, 
and and help people find their way through their challenges much more easily and much more quickly. Yeah, that that's amazing. Thank you so much for giving us that kind of perspective on what it's been like for you, because I know for myself, it's a little bit different because I didn't really come into this until about the last 15 years. So I can't even begin to imagine what it was like, but I'm sure there are people listening and watching today and in the next three while as this goes up on YouTube who say, yeah, I remember, I know what that was like. Now, um, now you've moved, you were in the corporate world for a while doing mm -hmm. that kind of work. You're a graphic artist, graphic design by trade, but then mm -hmm. you, you know, you moved into this spiritual energy work. So tell us a little bit about what it is that you do with people. How do you help these people who are wakening up and, and going through these challenges? Well, the first thing I do, it's really not me doing the work. I, I get out of the way. So in, in essence, I'm kind of channeling this information, this energy. Um, and the I follow the directions, basically. And oftentimes, <laughs> people will come to me and, and they'll say, well, I've got this problem. And, and me, at can't, the Karen level, I'm like, ah, oh, no, what am I going to do? But as soon as I get out of the way, this magic happens. So basically... The, the format that I follow, generally speaking, it definitely isn't always this way, but um, is I have the person tell me just a little bit about what's going on. So it's not talk therapy. Then what I'm looking for is just a little bit of information so that I can access the feeling tone, that specific frequency. So say someone comes to me and they've undergone some sort of trauma. Uh, let's just say as an example, car accident. So I'll talk to them and yet they, it hurts in the, the back of their neck. So basically I'm, I, I'm tuning in to really attune to that specific feeling in their body. And I've been told that I energetically blend with my clients. And so we start off with, um, uh, we create a sacred space where we're safe and at the beginning of the session, and then we also disconnect and clear everybody's field at the end. So there's no, um, you're not taking, I'm not taking on any of anyone's energy, nor is my client, and they're letting go of all the junk we've released. So what I do is I attune to that frequency. And if, it, say it was a, a traffic accident and their neck was hurt. So I'll attune to that, that upset in their neck. And as I'm attuning, oftentimes past life information will come in. And I, if I'm inclined, I'll verbalize it. Sometimes I don't with past lives because oftentimes, sometimes people will get very identified with that story. And what we're trying to do is release that energy. So sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. I'll be basically told what to do in that regard. So past lives, we clear the past, any past life energy, we clear ancestral memory which oh my gosh I had no idea going into this that ancestral memory was so powerful in that it it's like cement shoes it's so hard to change something at the at the uh, the personal level if the ancestral level is heavy duty so we cleared at the ancestral level the level of the cells the cellular memory the DNA and uh, the nervous system. And once that's all said and done, what we've done is, I, what I've done is I've kind of pulled out all that energy. And as I'm doing that, the client is also going through all those times they've had a hurt neck, as in this example. So the once we've got that, that cleared, we've got this sacred space that we want to fill now. So rather than me saying, oh, you should do this. No, 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 no. It's all about you. This work is all about empowering the client and taking back their own power and accessing and taking it back. So I have you attuned to your higher self or that wise, beautiful, beautiful part of you and ask, how do I want to be now moving forward? Or what new way of being shall I embody now? So then what we do is I have you, um, we'll put that into an affirmation form and then we install that new way of being into your field. And once that's all said and done, I have you think about that issue. So say, for example, it was the accident in this moment. And notice how you feel about it now in this moment. So if it was an emotional upset, 
I would have you notice and it would be like, oh, well, gee, you know, it, it, it feels far away or I can't access it at all. So that when, when you can't access a memory or it feels really neutral or there's no emotional charge, then you know you're free from it. What may come up is instead of anger, it may, or instead of the, the hurt neck, it may be, well, now I'm really angry, right? At that, that person who hit me, who, who, who wrecked my car and wrecked my body. So then we wash and repeat, we, we clear the anger. Until, Almost like peeling an onion. Yep. When you yep. talk about it through, you know, like with therapy, people say, oh my goodness, once I go into recovery, I go into therapy, it's like peeling an onion, things just show up. So yeah. what you're saying is as you're clearing different parts of that person's field, then it gives space for other things that have maybe been buried further down to come up to the surface to then be cleared out again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And years ago, I did a different modality. It was really cool. And uh, uh, I was doing group work. And I had the idea, I thought, geez, we were, and what we were doing, we were clearing, uh, as an example, w one evening we would for work on anger and all, all the people, all the participants would come with their anger stuff, anger issues, and we'd clear them. So it struck me, I was like, oh, you know, I wonder this whole resonance thing, I wonder if that works with clearing. So I actually did a test. So I had everyone in this group think of, uh, or come to the uh, session with three issues. Uh, ang around anger that they were angry about and they would rate them on a scale of zero to ten we would then we would clear we cleared one issue and then I had them check in on all three issues and notice how they felt about that uh, those each of those issues now in this moment of time and 95 percent of all the issues were released even though we only dealt with one of them wow so just by dealing with anger in relation to this issue, in relation to this specific person, anything and everything that resonates with that in your field, past, present, future, other timelines, dimensions, universes, uh, the ancestral memory, the nervous system, it's also cleared. Mm -hmm. So although I can never actually guarantee how long it's going to take to release a specific pattern, I can guarantee that with each release, you will feel better, more integrated and freer inside mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can certainly attest to that, having been working with you now for a couple of years. And I had a huge issue in the fall around mice. And I, oh, did, yes. not, I did not <laughs> know that I had this absolutely insane fear of mice. Um, and it took four sessions for us to clear the past lives, the ancestral, the, the physical experience that I had in my body. So, you know, it's not a quick fix, this treatment that you're doing, but then neither is it slow and laborious. It can vary depending on the depth of what you're dealing with, right? And as I recall, that dovetailed into a bunch of other issues as well. Yeah. That yeah, were yeah. Somehow, I, I, you never, at the intellectual level, you would never have imagined that they were connected. Right. So it wasn't, we weren't just dealing with the mice throughout those whole four sessions. We That's were dealing true. with other stuff as well. Yeah. And yeah. that was yeah, energetically connected. It was amazing. It was I so know. amazing. Yeah, it is. And mm -hmm. so, and, and so what I'm amazed by this is Karen. So you don't need to know any of the backstory about someone's problems, whatever their mm -hmm. chaos or drama or whatever it was. Now it could come up but it's not really relevant to the clearing process, which really must mm -hmm. free up your clients from their stories quite considerably. It does, it does, because each time you tell the story, you're amplifying that energy in your field a little bit more and a little bit more. So um, what I do in the beginning of uh, my work with most clients is I actually ask for their permission to cut them off very abruptly to say, okay, I got it. I got it. Because uh, people really like telling their horrible stories, yes. which is, you know, we all do, right? It's like, yeah. oh, so um, I, I asked for that permission. So I cut them off because I want to give people the best bang for their buck. And when I've got what I need, I want to just drive in and do the work. Right. Yeah. Now you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier when you were explaining how this works, you said, 
I'm told. So help us understand who's who's telling you what. I'm a little, you know, confused about that. Um, that's a good question. It depends on who I'm interacting with. Sometimes uh, I work really closely with Archangel Michael. So when I get into a, if I get into a problem, I will, um, I will ask him. Generally, though, it's just kind of, I don't know, I guess it's my, I've never been asked that question. It's, I guess it's my higher self. I get right. this, um, this information. And sometimes I'll call in experts. Michael will hook me up with experts. Then they'll come in and it's uh, actually so it's very, Michael so it's very eth etheric and um, like it's really doing this work at the at the energetic frequency level. It's not yep. like you have anybody physical coming in and helping you do this. It's a very much a spiritual aid. And I know you have you have your own healing guides that yeah. you know assist you in this energy work. And so you know, um, and so you do this. You don't have to be with the person. You oh, do it it's better all. Better if I'm not. Yeah, you do it all over the telephone. And so then I imagine that you work globally. Then you can work with anyone anywhere. Yes, I have a couple client a co client in Japan, a couple well, quite a few in Australia, the U.S. of course, Canada, uh, Ireland, Scotland. Uh, wow. Oh gosh, uh, South America. Ever yeah, lots of places. Kind so of, now you you mentioned also that you're clearing things at the ancestral level. So yeah. how does that work? How does that work? Because you know, here we are. We're dealing with this huge collective shift that we're going through how does the work that you do um help with the collective okay so there you're referring to two different collectives there so we there's the ancestral level the the ancestral what do i call it oh gosh i just brain fart um uh the, the, the anyway the ancestral level which is our past so that's our our parents our grandparents and great grandparents and so on and so on down the line and they tend to pass on their traumas sometimes I'll, I'll access uh spells that have been placed upon the family curses and we'll clear those which is amazing i mean who knew right um sometimes it's um it's just patterns right alcoholism that's passed on it seems to be genetically other things uh that are really big needing release is um uh abuse rape big one really big one well we do know you know that one in three women have been abused one in five yeah. men so mm -hmm. that is a lot a, a significant portion of our yeah of our population and as you said ancestrally that's something that was really quite normal in yep. the past, you know, and we're moving, we're moving so much quicker out, out of that kind of energy, but we still yes. do have it here. So there's still some, still some work to do until we really get into that energy of love. And yeah. so and as we're as I'm releasing that from the ancestral level and from the individual, so that if they as an example, if the the woman was had undergone any abuse or or out and out rape. Um, I, I, we, I can actually working together, we can actually get to the point where she can think about those issues or those experiences and be neutral and go, yeah, totally sucked that that happened, but I feel free. I'm not, I'm not burdened anymore. I don't have that automatic response of anger or fear or powerlessness or whatever was her specific mm -hmm. response. Right? right. So by clearing that for as as in this example at the ancestral level at the individual level and probably past lives as well would have come in to to be released we're also releasing that from the huge the whole human collective as well as the the feminine collective of humanity right so with each release at the that we do individually that because we're part of the collective we make it easier for people to follow that healing path on their own in the future right right yeah so it's like we're 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 laying down new trail or maybe not new trail but we're padding it down even more so it makes it easier for the next person to 
to walk. That and so trail. what what I what I imagine with your clients is that they have a newfound sense of freedom about themselves and their lives. And it's so interesting. So my understanding of the work now is we release it at the at the uh, etheric level, or you could say the, the level of plasma. And once that's released at the level, the etheric level, it automatically drops down into the astral level, which is the our thoughts and our, our uh, emotions. And it also releases and drops down into the physical. So if there is physical contraction in the body from any of these, these traumas, that's going to release as well so that new healing, physical healing energies can come in and, and clean that up. Right. So if there was, yeah, if there was any real physical problems, um, a perfect example would be, oh my gosh, a woman who, who uh, a physical example would be a woman that I worked with who had um, terrible pain. She was, uh, oh gosh, she was on painkillers and, and I only had one session with her and she wrote back and she said, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. Uh, I, I, I took the dog for a walk. I was able to vacuum without being crippled for three days. I cut my pain meds in half. And I was like, wow, that's really amazing. I, I, and I was kind of like, why did she come back? And then I remembered that she was on disability. So there was some positive, um, right. Uh, what do you call benefits to the ailments that she yeah, was, yeah, that she was yeah. using. So she couldn't get she totally experienced that she was better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a freedom. What a yeah. freedom. And um, so now let's talk a little bit about how people can find you. So if somebody is wanting to connect with you, what's the best way for them to connect with you if they want to know more about this work? The best thing to do is come to karenhaywood.com, uh, my website. And it's, it's Haywood, like hey you would H-E-Y-W-O-O-D. Um, I, I have a presence on Facebook don't message me there. It'll take me maybe months to get back to you. That's how often I check the Facebook page. It's best to shoot me uh, an email on the contact page. I also have, if you're interested in the work, I also offer uh, a complimentary discovery session so that people can, uh, we, we have an hour to have a, a conversation you can talk about what what your problems are or your challenges or what it is that was what you're hoping to get clear of. I can talk, tell you about uh, my past experiences with those sort of situations, what you can expect, as well as answer any questions. And I'm not Beautiful. salesy at all. It has to feel right for you. And I usually go uh, send people away, like, or I end the conversation with, you know, do you want to book a session or do you want to sit with this? You yeah, know? and I, I can totally understand that. I've done that myself many times with potential coaching clients that I would work yeah. with, where mm -hmm. I really understand this is this kind of work. You have to really be in a place where you're ready. You're kind of ready to release it. You're ready to do it. You're ready to commit to the investment to create that yeah new situation for you amazing now um let's go on to the sacred economics mm. offering so every person that i have um invited on to my show i've sent them some information about what sacred economics is and why they would want to invest in this kind of an offer to to people who would be potential clients because it's not your average kind of offer so I sent all that to Karen. So I'm, I have no idea what she's going to tell me. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious to hear what it is that you're, you're coming forward with as an offering to anyone who is watching this live or on the YouTube replay. Mm -hmm. Yes, exciting. So what I'd like to do is offer a session and then the individual will decide what it's worth after they've received the session. Beautiful. So yeah. if you are interested in that, then I will give you my phone number right after um, the next thing that I'm going to tell you. So that's amazing. So for someone that's really going to give them the opportunity to kind of test out what it is that you do, give you a taste of you and how you work, and also potentially really clear something that's, you know, been in their way for a while. So yes. that, that's and wonderful. Thank you. 
And what I'm planning on doing is offering a one and a half hour session. Normally it's an hour session. So that way we can do, uh, we can take the first half hour to kind of talk a little bit more, get to know each other. And then we can, we can dive in so okay. that you're not feeling, so you've got, you've got space to, right. to chit chat. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So as part of my agreement with this uh, creation of this series, um, I am going to match Karen's offer and I will match that with um, an energy kind of session. It won't be what Karen does because that's not what I do, but I do do all kinds of meditation work and channeling work and coaching work. And so whatever, whatever anybody wants to bring to the table, is something that I can certainly assist you with. Uh, my expertise is really around intimacy. So I'm offering that up because I find that that's what a lot of people really struggle with is being able to be vulnerable and be able to share authentically who they are, whether it's with their partner or a coworker or children. Um, there are many things that get in the way, like we were talking before about ancestral issues and different kinds of abuse. So I could do also a 90 minute session and it would be the same deal. My call out charge is normally $250 for one of those sessions. And so that I would offer. And again, just like Karen, you get the opportunity to have the experience with me and then decide after the fact whether or not you want to pay whatever amount is, you know, feels comfortable and right for you for whatever you get out of the session. Wonderful. So mm -hmm. if you want to um, claim either of those two gifts, then you would text me at 416-358-1457. Again, that number is 416-358-1457. And those gifts are available to two separate people or one individual person. If you are watching this in the replay, please feel free to text me. And if those like, who are live, yeah, they know too. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to add that what you can do is look at the testimonial, my testimonial page. There's a whole pile of testimonials uh, to look, see what kind of issues I've worked with, with people in the past. I mean, it mm. deals with everything from trauma to blockages, to uh, feeling blocked around your life purpose, um, being difficulty accessing intuition, your own power, virtually right. anything that bothers you is what it boils down to. Beautiful, beautiful. So now let's, let's just wrap up here. And I'd like to ask you, you know, you said anything that bothers you. So how do you deal <laughs> with the things that bother you? How do you keep your vibration high in these really challenging times? What are some of the things that you found that you've incorporated into your life that would maybe be of help to someone watching this today? It all boils down to being able to raise your vibration out of where you are into a higher frequency and anything that brings a smile to your face. So, so what about you? I'm, I'm asking you oh, for me personally. personally oh, yes. Okay. Me personally. What do you do? Well, sessions, doing sessions, right? Because I'm like <laughs> way high. That's, uh, that's a big one. Doing a session for myself is another. Uh, walking in the woods. I love, love, love nature and being, feeling connected to the woods is, uh, is, a, is a really big one, being connected right. to nature. Right. Um, breath work is another one that, that I also do where, um, yeah, breathing, breathing in, breathing out breathing in and breathing out and just focusing on the breath. It takes me out of my mind and the busyness in the mind and brings me back to the heart. And the heart I feel is the bridge between the spiritual realm and this third dimensional human realm. Right, right. Beautiful, beautiful. And that is that some of the things that we've worked on in the meditation series that I run on Wednesdays, the last one is coming up this coming Wednesday and really helping. I know that is, that's part of the journey that we are, we're on as light workers on the planet right now is helping people 
to to connect more with mother nature to connect more with gaia to be out there and really gleaning that beautiful high vibrational frequency from the planet mm. and then also connecting with the breath with the prana with our own life force and also opening up our hearts and coming into that love space and that love energy Karen, it's just been amazing. I know that we're going to have you on the show again next year. Pretty sure I'm going to continue this series and because there's so many other things that we could talk about today. But I just want to take a moment to thank you so much for being here with me today. It's just been a pleasure. And for anyone who is watching, if you are interested in this work, please do reach out to myself or to Karen directly. So on Monday, we will have Peter Dennis. He is a hypnotist mm. and a channeling facilitator. He'll be on at 12 o'clock. And so I thank you for being here today. Thank you thank if you're you. listening or watching to the replay. Thank you again to Karen. And we will see you again next time on the conversation thank series. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>